Hello Year 10, I'm Mrs Coogan and I'm here to introduce to you the subject of the week, which is English literature. For those of you who love literature already, this will be a PowerPoint designed to simply enlighten you about the excitement that will come your way at A-level. And for those of you who are undecided at this point about what you'd like to do next, this is to ensure you have all the information that you need to make an important decision about whether or not this is the right A-level choice for you. So, why English literature? Well, firstly, you wouldn't believe the amount of pupils who comment to us on their first week of taking English A-level, how different this is to study in GCSE. Yes, of course, we all love the whodunit plotline of an, of an inspector calls. And yes, we love the message of goodwill to all men in Christmas Carol. But although they do tackle some important moral topics and certainly raise some important issues for the reader, they do it in a very pupil friendly, smiley, romanticism kind of manner. So this is not so at A-level. This is where it gets a bit darker. Here you're going to meet controversial and banned authors such as Alice Walker's uh, novel Colour Purple, which was banned in several um, southern states of America and is still banned in prisons in the south of America today. Um, we're going to be studying taboo topics such as Colson Whitehead's novel um, The Nickel Boys which is based on a true life event of the Florida Dozer School for Boys. There's a bit of homework for you to go and research what happened there. There's a recent uncovering that happened at the site that once was that reform school for boys. Um, it covers many harrowing events and a host of very controversial, colourful and interesting diverse characters. So we're going to take you all around the continent in order to do that and there'll be a great deal of time and travel involved in A-level literature. We're going to explore the restricted lives of women during the Victorian era and obviously due to A Christmas Carol you'll be very familiar with the Victorian era. Um, we're going to talk about the mental anguish and struggles of some of the poets uh, due to things like oppression, time periods, poverty etc. Uh, relationship dilemmas Racism is a key topic in this uh, A-level. Uh, sexism is definitely prevalent within it and oppression of many different groups of people, inclu including children, which um, I'm all sure you'll have an opinion on that. So it sounds uplifting, very lighthearted, I hear you say. Uh, well, I suppose who doesn't love a good plot twist, crime novel, crime based on every corner and lots of true life events to make it even more interesting, interesting and harrowing at times. And there's certainly a villain in every piece that we're going to study and explore. We don't avoid anything. We don't shy away from anything at English Literature A-level. Our topics and our choices are meant to challenge readers. They are meant to challenge you. They're meant to create debates, they're meant to reveal previously untold truths and they are meant to make you have an emotional reaction and an emotional connection. And um, just a bit of general information then. So the qualification, we have an A-level at the end of a two-year course that you will receive. And the education board that we go with is EDUCAS. Um, in that course, there's 80% examination at the end of the uh, year 13 and 20% uh, written coursework as well. And there'll be three exams at the end of year 13. 
So what does the course consist of? Because I've told you why it's interest and I haven't really told you what you'll be doing. So there are four components to this course. Um, there is, and this isn't necessarily in order of what you'll be studying it, but there's a poetry unit, which is uh, element one, component one. So you'll be studying some Victorian style poetry, uh, which is mainly a female poet called Christina Rossetti. And then we'll also be studying more recent poetry text, uh, which currently we study Sylvia Plath and Ted Hughes, who were um, married and we'll be looking at their kind of writing and text as a comparison. OK, component two is a drama unit. Uh, good old Shakespeare's back on the course. Uh, currently, we either study King Lear or Hamlet as our choices to be or not to be. That is the question. Um, and another drama text will be studying uh, a comparison between A Streetcar Named Desire, which is a very kind of current text. And we'll also be studying that in relation to uh, Malfi as well. So these are two uh, drama texts that you will compare. Uh, component three is what we call the unseen unit, where you will have an unseen extract that you'll have to respond to. Uh, and you will also have an unseen poem where you get a choice of two poems and you will respond to an unseen poem there of your choice. And component four, and the bit that most people like uh, the most, is the coursework unit. That is between two and a half thousand words and three and a half thousand words long. And it's based on two Two novels of choice we can direct you and help you select your choices or you might be an avid reader and already have some lovely uh, text that you would like to pick as your coursework topics we'll help you pick a question and a link between the two of them and you will basically compare those two texts So a lot of people ask us why English literature in a world of kind of maths and science where everyone wants to do maths and science, maths and science. They think, oh, why would we want to do English literature? Well, English literature is everything. Well, we believe it's everything. It covers everything. It is every single subject. 
it pairs so well with other topics for A level. Uh, within this particular course, we've got religion, culture, history, geography, journalism. There's just an array of other subjects that this will help you. It will enlighten you and help assist other courses for A level. OK, however, for those of you who are mathematicians and scientists out there who think I'm not sure how this is relevant, English is a fantastic opportunity to improve essay writing skin skills, which you will require when you go to university for any course that you study at university. So it will make you excellent at essay writing. I think English teachers um, all of those subjects above but it actually kind of puts the human element into it it's not facts it's not statistics it's not dates it gives you all of that but it also gives you about a person it tells you a story and sometimes the personal touch and the elements of human nature within literature I think help us to learn and understand the subjects around it so much more and it creates this path for empathy and sympathy and understanding which is a key life skill for every single one of us it makes us better people it helps us understand the world okay so my top five reasons for why I think you should study English literature um, firstly literature inspires the imagination so one of the first things we do is to learn how to read from a very early age, OK? Watching a movie doesn't really require a lot of mental work, whereas reading words from a page require you to mentally imagine the scene and characters. So they strengthen your imagination. And this ex exercise itself promotes creative thinking and innovation. Very good skills for any employer in the future. Uh, it helps to expand your vocabulary. Proven fact. A person's vocabulary is expanded by a wide range of literature that they read. So obviously that if you read magazines or like books or blogs, etc., you're going to come across lighter vocabulary, so to speak. So many readers who join the course may at first be unfamiliar with some of the language used in the books, especially books in the past. So this challenges you and obviously expands the vocabulary side of it as well for you. It motivates critical thinking, which is a really big part of the course. We don't want you to be silent. We don't want you to be sat there just listening to us. We want you to be a critical thinker. So to live a fulfilling life, you have to be able to be a critical thinker. It helps you figure out what the truth is and work through problems. And I think literature is an excellent way for all of our students to learn how to become critical thinkers, have opinions, give a voice to things. Um, also, history. So it teaches us. Many people say history repeats itself if we don't learn from it, which I completely agree with, which, you know, literature offers a unique way to engage with history. It's maybe more exciting than learning just to, not to kind of diss the history department in any way. But it, sometimes for some readers and some learners, it may be more interesting than just studying a timeline or memorising facts. So we're exposed to different perspectives from that time, different accounts from that time at which they were written. Uh, reading will also help you improve your writing skills. Again, as I said before about your essay skills for university, and it will help to fuel your imagination. It'll provide you with an insight to different literary styles, how to organize something, discuss things like character developments, etc. And finally, we, I just wanted to say, come and see us, come and talk to us. We all love talking about our subject. We all love literature. Ask any one of us and I bet you can guess what our favourite subject was at school. And we don't want to put anyone off. We don't want you to think you have to be an avid reader, go away and read a book a week in order to have an interest in our subject. Really, the fundamentals of this subject is that you have to have an interest in humanity and how people work, how people think, empathy, sympathy. Bring all that to us and we will bring the rest. So don't be put off by thinking, you know, I don't read enough. We will provide that. We just want you to provide an openness and an awareness of the diversity that we're going to bring your way. OK, come and see us at any time. Thank you.